kind of told you what the problem is now with the cats, but let's go on further and give you a possible solution. You know, give the reader or the user a little bit more information. And we're gonna do that with some further sections. Gonna click the plus sign and we're gonna add in a section that's got two columns. Now, please do remember you could have clicked the folder and you could have picked a block or a template, maybe something from here that you might have wanted to go for. I prefer the crate from scratch, but there's no harm in picking something from here, hero, header, whatever you want to go for, if it's already got the look you want to go for and you want to save time. But I do like to build from scratch. So we've got a section with two columns. I'm going to go over to the section. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be a boxed and I'm going to set it to be a boxed of 1,100. That means the items in there are never going to stretch the full width of the screen. It just means that it's nicely in the center or however you want to align it. I'm also going to set the columns gap to be no gap. And the height for now, I'm just going to set it to be a minimum height of zero. And I will come back to modify that as we go along. Let's now go and add in some items. So here's what my thinking is. I'm going to have another image over here and then here. I will have some wording. So let's just get in an image over here first. Let's just go over to our widgets or elements and we're going to drop in a image. I'm going to click here and I'm now going to pick a image. I'm going to pick something that looks a little bit nicer than the angry cat. So we got one here of them stroking one over there and one looking quite chilled out. I'm going to go for this one first and there's a reason. This image here I find a little bit dark and I want to add a bit more of an airiness to the page now. So let's just insert that image there. That image is now in. I'm going to set the image size to be full. Please do understand that this is actually affecting your resolution. I know a lot of people that go and pick large or medium or thumbnail. Just go for full. I'm going to leave the alignment alone and I am going to come back to modify the style of this in a moment. But before I do that, I just want to re-inspect the image. This is a, uh, a portrait image. There's a lot of estate going on at the top here. Now, it's very common for people to have modified their image in Photoshop, GIMP, or whatever software you're using before they've added it into WordPress Media Library. Please do remember, the best thing to do is get your image in as it was built, right? Make sure you've converted it into WebP, but get it in. Then click edit image, right? And then click crop. And now I'm going to crop this image. And I can see down here the sizes are being modified. Let me just move myself out of the way here. Can you see down here? As I start to drag this bit here up and down, can you see the values are modifying? Now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to, <laughs> sorry, I'm activating Burfa before we need to. And I'm just going to double click here and I'm going to click 1710. So what I now get is a perfectly square image and I'm now going to modify this to be something like that. I'm quite happy with that size there. And then I'm going to hit uh, crop over here. And then I'm going to hit the save option here. And that will now be saved. So when I now insert that image, we get the perfect square image. You might need to refresh the page if it doesn't automatically bring through the new version because it still has the old one in its memory. Just refresh your page and you'll be totally, totally fine. Trust me on this. So we have an image. Now I wanna bear, make a point though that we are gonna create some space, but for now I just wanna get the contents in and then we'll worry about the exact spacing, the margins and the padding. I'm actually now gonna go over here and pick the text editor and I'm gonna drag that in over there. I'm just gonna move myself a little bit out the way, so I'm just here. Right, so into here now, we have the option of either putting in some predefined text. Instead though, rather than do that, we're gonna use Bertha to give us some further information. So I've kind of gone through the problems like scratching and clawing and making a mess and stuff like that. What we're gonna do is click Bertha. I'm gonna leave it on the website tab and I'm gonna scroll down until I get to paragraph generator, okay? So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna put in some details and see what Bertha can give back to me. The title is, this is how you calm your cat and in my own words, innovative spray created from natural herbs, calms the cat, safe around kids and other pets as well. Let's generate some ideas. And hey presto, here we go. And you can see how just with a little bit of pre-info I've put in there. Look what it's churning out for us here. 
you have a cat, just a few sprays. You know, the best part is that our spray is safe to use around children and other pets. Look, worry about accidents. This is taking what I've already done and expanded on it. Or we could go for a, a, um, a more simpler explanation. Look no further than our natural spay, spay, spray even. Looking for, I actually prefer this one here. There are bits of this I also like, and I might use this bit here. Um, but I have to say, all of these are kind of really, really good. I'm actually going to go for this one here. So I'm going to click that, and it will now add it into our text editor. And you can see it adding it there straight away. It is looking a little bit tight because it is right up against the borders because we have no gap or anything like that. So let's go and add some in. I'm going to go to this column. Okay, so click on the column. Go to advanced, and this is the point now where I could add in some padding into the column. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add in about 30. That adds in 30 pixels all the way inside of that column, which is looking fine. However, this image now is quite big. So let me now go over to the column for the image, go to advanced, and I'm now going to put in a 30 over here as well. Again, the image is still looking really, really big. So if I click on the image, not the column, we're on the image now, go to style, and I'm now going to define what is the size of this. This is quite a big image, by the way. It's 1,700 pixels. It does not need to be 1,700 pixels. I want to make that really clear right now. Let me just change the width now and get it to be something like that. I think that one works quite well. So we're going to go, let me change it to pixel. I'm going to change it to be about 225, 225, I like that. I'm also going to set the max width to be a 225 as well. The reason why you want to set your max width is because if you don't, as you start to increase your screen or a big ultra wide screen, if you use percentage, your image will go from like that to like that. And believe me, right, you might not want it to continuously change like that. So make sure you take account of that. So there we go. We now have our image and we got our wording. You could argue, though, looking at that, that it does still look a little bit sparse, in my opinion, in that you've got this image and you've got the wording and it is looking a little bit quite spaced out. So here's where I'm now going to go over to my section and the box width. I'm now going to decrease this to be something like that. OK, so that is now looking a little bit more better than having it quite spread out. Before it was 1,100 pixels in width. Now it is 676. What we'll also say about this current section is that it is quite close to the top. So let me click on the section, go to advanced, and I'm now going to put some space between the top. And I'm going to go for 50 pixels. So I've already got 30 here. So 50 plus 30 makes 80. And I am going to add in about 50 down here as well. That means the next section we add is going to have some breathing space, okay, of about 80 pixels from the section above and 80 pixels from the section below. Of course, you can tweak and modify that as you go along once you start to add things in. Now, we have an image and we have some wording. Um, is this enough, though? Um, so I'm just going to very quickly say that you could add in a, a bit of extra color, maybe, just to make this pop a bit more. So if I was to now go over to the image, and I go to uh, the box of shadow that we have here. I'm going to add in a color to be that yellow color. Now, we do get this yellowy, glowy pattern around it. However, it looks a little bit weak, in my opinion, especially against white. So let's now make it a block color. So we're still over here. OK, the blur I'm going to drop to be zero. Right, it's completely dropped, but you can see a faint line there because the spread is one. If I set this to be zero, you'll have nothing there. But instead, I'm going to increase this to be about 10, like that. So we get a full on border. But I could have done that using the border radius over here. So I could have gone in here, put a solid border on. Sorry, not the border radius, wrong words there. I could have made the width of this be a 10 as well. And it would have done kind of the same thing. But we're not doing that with the border type, OK? We're using the box shadow. So the, the spread is a 10, but there is zero blur. I'm now going to use these buttons over here, or the slider, to now start to rearrange where that shadow actually kicks in. So I'm going to say, let's go for a minus 20, like that. 
And how about we go for a vertical down as well? So if I now put, sorry, not vertical, positive. So if I do something like that, we get a bit of an effect going on there. Now you can see it's not exactly right because even though I've done 20, it's not actually moving much there. And that's because of the padding we had in there. So I'm just going to now shrink the spread of this to be a five like that. And I'm going to increase this to be a, uh, let me get this right. We're going to go for a 25 like that. So if we now view that on there, we, we have the image, we've got the wording, and we've now got this lovely little um, offset shadow effect, but it's a bold, blocky shadow effect, not your blurry one. Now, very quickly, on review, I am going to change the size of this text here. Now, the text above over here is a Lato 1.4. This is a Railway 18. I'm going to just leave this as a Railway. I'm going to put the REM as a 1.2, okay? So it's not a 1.4, because 1.4 on here actually does look quite big. Let me show you. That's looking pretty um, uh, menacing, right? But I'm going to go for a 1.2. 1 1.1 1 .1, um, is kind of like we're going back almost into the size of the 300. Did feel a little bit small on reflection. The 1.2 does feel a little bit better there. So I'm going to go with that as our kind of like intro now into here's what the solution is that we can offer you. Um, of course, though, don't just leave this and move away. Make sure you check it how it looks in the mobile. So let's do that right now. Let's go over and go to mobile view. I'm going to set this to be uh, 378. And as we go down, you can now see we have a bit of spacing. We have this effect over here. The image is in the center. It might feel like it's moving over to the left, but that's because of the block uh, effect we have there. We then have our wording. Now, this is where you might want to make a decision. Are you going to have the wording above the text or below. And if you do want to switch it, all you do is go to your section, go to advanced, go to responsive, and over here you'll have the option to reverse the column. So if we reverse it, this is what we'll now get. We get the wording, okay, like that. We get, uh, and the image below there, I prefer having it like this. Just because we've gone from having images and text to now having just an image before we get the text. Please bear in mind, though, always go into your section, okay, and check if you have got any padding on there. Or I'll prefer to have 15 uh, on the left and right of my text. However, in this scenario, because the column has already got some padding, I'm happy to leave that as the 30 there and we can move on. So if you do things methodically, step by step, when you move on to your mobile view, it's actually not that difficult, but I prefer to get your section in, how many columns are you going to have, add your content, then mess around with the margins and padding. If you do that before you've built it, you'll end up redoing it over and over again. So just take your time on doing that.